Hello, everyone. My name is Manolis Ignorolakis, the founder and CEO of Reality Crowd TV, and welcome to our latest webcast, How to Use AngelList for Crowdfunding or Otherwise. We have an excellent show today with a lot of great news and tips to share with you. But before we begin, I just want to make sure that everyone understands the ground rules and how you can engage and ask questions to make this webinar an even better experience for you and for the other viewers. Uh, first off, if you're watching through Google Hello, Hangouts on air, um, you have a uh, oh, sorry about that. If you're watching through Google Hangouts on air, you'll be able to actually ask your question using the Q and A application. If you're watching on Crowdcast, the webinar software we're using, you can actually watch um, and ask the questions through the Q and A application there. And of course, if you're asking within Vicken, uh, we'll also do a review of the news feed in case you're actually in the virtual incubator and crowdfunding network. So to get this show started, I just want to go over a brief presentation that will really share with you uh, a little bit about what we're up to. But first, we really just want to make a very large announcement. We actually are teaming up with a pre-seed program that will be reviewing the members of Vicken who come to this program through our websites. And this program will be actually investing in certain companies that it finds promising. And we will be helping those companies develop their idea over time and then further raise capital down the road. So the, the presentation that I'm about to show you now explains what that relationship will look like between Reality Crowd TV, the virtual incubator and crowdfunding network, and then also Startup Connections incubator program. And so we're going to go over AngelList in a moment, but I just want to show you the presentation uh, that we're going to go through very quickly here so that everyone is all in, the, all in the loop. So let's see the presentation. All right, so I, as I mentioned, we're partnering up with Startup Connection, and the founder of Startup Connection is Bert Shalensky. So we're doing this partnership through AngelList, and that's why this is relevant for everyone to actually know, because we're going to go over it on AngelList shortly. There's going to be a three-pronged approach to this partnership. We're going, to, we're going to identify promising entrepreneurs. We're going to further develop these promising entrepreneurs. And then we're going to help them grow by giving them access to additional capital through syndications and other investors. The identity phase is really Vicken's role. And so if, if you're watching this webinar and you don't know what Vicken is, Vicken is the virtual incubator and crowdfunding network. It's a free social network for startups to learn how to crowdfund. And that network right there will be the ultimate place where we will actually get all of the different uh, opportunities and identify all the promising startups. Now, as you can see, the role of Vicken will be really the marketing arm that will help identify applications for the launch program. If you're an active member of Vicken uh, and you watch our webinars and you, and you feel that you might be able to apply, we're really going to try to be that marketing arm to identify these promising startups. The program itself, which you'll see on the next page, not only invests uh, pre-seed funding, but also offers half-price marketing services, web development services, and other services that are top-notch for the entrepreneurs. And so what Vicken will also do is we will manage the relationship between the entrepreneur and the actual um, service providers that are going to be giving those half price services. Additionally, we'll have uh, webinars. Uh, once these, once these uh, startups are in the program, we'll have demo days and pitch competitions to give these individuals more, uh, more exposure. And then we'll also help uh, during the due diligence phase when we first identify the startups, We'll also be doing a little bit of legwork to make sure that all the required documentation is available for Bert Shalensky when he makes his decision on the launch investment. So as you can see, the details of the program here, uh, it shows the, uh, the, the uh, target market here is small businesses with projected sales goals of 500000 to $2 million over the next three years. So there, there's, a, there's going to be you know, a need for big ideas here. There's going to be a need to have a very good plan, a very good business plan. And really, we're, we're trying to identify driven and dedicated entrepreneurs. We're not looking for part-time entrepreneurs. We're looking for full-time entrepreneurs who are dedicated to bringing their business to the next level. 
the, the program makes available a variety of services at the entrepreneur's discretion at half price, up to 20000 So if normally these services would cost $20,000, what this launch program is, is doing is it will only charge that entrepreneur $10,000 because all of the service providers would have agreed to this program. Uh, all the services here you can see, which are definitely going to be needed for someone to run a legitimate business. Up to $10,000, and in certain cases, uh, there may be more, uh, but up to $10,000 of pre-seed funding would be invested into the startup. And now this $10,000, however, is not going to be the money that is used to pay for the services. Ultimately, he, you know, Bert will be investing alongside the entrepreneur. So the entrepreneur must have uh, an ability to invest some funds themselves to get these services as well. So it'll be kind of a joint co-investment in the entity, uh, providing the ability to actually get the services they need and other, uh, other funding uh, in the future. And of course, it, you know, the, his ability to do this, uh, to provide the half price services and provide that 10,000 of seed capital, will, his exchange would be an equity position in the company, uh, obviously, that's also negotiated, but he has a range here of about 10 to 20 percent equity in the actual startup. So it, it's really in these early stages of where the company is right about to experience growth, where uh, where we would come in and help the startup raise the capital they need and make their business a little bit more uh, marketing oriented to get more sales and more users. And then finally, the last piece of this is the syndicate piece. Uh, this will be that for those startups over over the certain period of time that that they're within this program, uh, a minimum it, it's going to take at least uh, six months to up to eighteen months. And as you can see, there is a little uh, a little timeline here that that shows what a startup can expect. But we we don't expect the startup to be making millions right off the bat. Uh, we we believe that in eighteen months or so. Uh, that should be a pretty good period to tell if this is actually going to work or not. And so the entrepreneur, again, must have a summary plan. Uh, the entrepreneur is, to, is expected to invest some of their own funds in sweat equity to provide both credibility and a base to raise additional funds. And the salaries and owner withdrawals will be developed by both parties so that, uh, you know, someone's not going out and renting limos every week with, with the money that they're investing. And so... This is really the main goal here. It's, it's to really help startups uh, get to the next level. It's not to take uh, too much equity. He even has a buyback clause here that says, you know, entrepreneurs would be offered a quick buyback opportunity if they see great potential. So if early on the, the launch program invests in a startup and suddenly whatever that negotiated equity was seems like it's ex exploding, he's willing to do a buyback program because it's not about you know, making your your future investments into into your organization um, be harder to do with with a cap table that might not be worth it. So he he understands that, and this is really just to grow and market and get to that next level of funding. And so now we'll go to the go to the Angelist demo and Q and A. So in today's demo, we're going to go over Angelist in particular, and these are the different uh, different steps that we're going to go through. Uh, from the personal profiles all the way through to the syndicates, the ability to post regular updates, doing an analysis for your target investor audience, doing an analysis for either partnerships or business developments to identify startup, connecting with your target market on AngelList, and then engagement models with investors and startups and other social strategies. And so before I really do this, I also want to show you one last thing here. Uh, a very important thing because I think it, I, I think it kind of helps to show what uh, what things you should be doing from a high level. So what you're looking at here is an AngelList marketing proposal that we would normally give to a client who needed our help on AngelList. So we we as an organization help people out to reach investors and and uh, build their profiles and gain traction. I wanted to show you this really quickly because. It'll give you an idea of, of what you would need to do on AngelList, whether you do it yourself or whether you hire someone else. But you want to make sure your profile, both business and personal, is optimized. You want to make sure that you're posting regularly. You need to identify the likely investors that would be interested in your particular company. 
You're going to want to make sure that you connect with people daily aggressively, and there's multiple ways to do that, which I'll show you today. Uh, and once you're connected, you, you know, a connection is worth nothing unless you put in the legwork to actually – uh, identify additional additional ways to engage with that person. So building a message, engaging with the private connection is very important. And then of course there's other strategies to use outside of AngelList to drive traffic to your profile. And then you always want to make sure that whoever's working on this, you have status meetings with them to make sure that they're um, they're ultimately doing what they have to do. So with that said, I am going to begin the demo, but I'm going to do a quick cursory look to see if we have any uh, any questions. So no questions here, and I do not believe there are any questions here. So before we do the demo again, I want to show you the virtual incubator and crowdfunding network. Now that now that we announced this partnership for all you who are watching, if, if you are a member of the virtual incubator, you now see this programs tab. And so there's two tabs here, apply for funding, which would take you to the Startup Connection launch program. And then you also have apply to invest. And this is only for accredited investors. This is the syndicate that we are creating as part of this program to ultimately help further investment down the road. After the pre-seed, this is what they call a syndicate. That will, uh, that will allow us to help the startups that go through the program raise further investment. So let's start at square one. If I were to start at square one, you would be essentially just trying to understand the basics of AngelList. So assuming that you've created an account, you would be brought to your homepage, and this is what it would look like. It, it tells you what startups are currently open for investment, really which ones are trending. So th these are other people's startups. It shows you what the, what the top investments were in the last seven days of different companies that are raising money. So as you can see, AngelList itself is an equity crowdfunding platform. And you can see that startups are raising a lot of money on it already. And um, again, it keeps showing you some of the transactions. This is more of a dashboard. So what you would do next, so if, if you wanted to start your uh, AngelList journey, really what you would do is you would start with your profile. And everyone who joins will ultimately join with their personal profile. And this is pretty important to uh, make sure that you get right. Your profile, just like a LinkedIn profile, tells everybody a snapshot of who you are and what you do. You're able to actually uh, create a syndicate uh, like I did. You're able to show your investments in your own companies like I did. Uh, and you're able to then create a startup profile as well for your company. And we'll get to that in a moment. But just like a LinkedIn profile, you have your about section. All you got to do is click edit and you can update it. Nothing too, uh, nothing too different, difficult or exciting here. but you want to make sure that you give off a good first impression. And you have the ability to, uh, of course, add projects or request references from other people on AngelList. One way to supercharge your initial, uh, your initial foray into AngelList, of course, is also to connect your other social media accounts. So AngelList is beautiful. And the reason why it's a viral platform the way it is, if, if you look here, you'll see that AngelList is the number 3,000 most visited site in the world, according to Alexa.com. So they're in the top 3,000 most visited sites in the world because there's that many people, that many startups, that many investors using it. So just knowing the traffic here will tell you that whether you want to crowdfund or not, there's many opportunities to participate in the, in, in the boon that crowdfunding represents. As I was saying, if you were to start your first foray into AngelList, after you create your profile, you add your photo, all these things, the next thing I would do is this. I would go to the settings. And within settings, there is a tab that says social networks. Now, why is this important? Because as you connect 
each of your social networks or each of your uh, email accounts. The beauty of this is, is that it ultimately can refresh the connection. And if you, if you connected with someone recently uh, from LinkedIn, for instance, if I click refresh here, what this eventually does is it interfaces with LinkedIn and that interface with LinkedIn would then allow you to connect with any one of your contacts on LinkedIn who are part of AngelList. And as you can see here, I've already done this a lot, but I have four people who are part of my LinkedIn connections that are also on AngelList. So when, I, when you do this, it automatically defaults to select all. And what I always do is I always click the follow for selected. And so that really is useful because, as you can see, you're following four more people on AngelList. Now, similar to my other uh, my other programs, such as the the Twitter for crowdfunding, the LinkedIn for crowdfunding, and the Google Plus for crowdfunding, AngelList is really a social network at heart. So it it follows the same dynamics as all other social networks, which is if you're if you have a profile that is intriguing to a specific demographic. And if you engage that demographic by following them first, it increases the likelihood that when they look at your profile, they will follow you back. So consider AngelList as uh, that same methodology of the other social networks, that if you follow them, they'll probably follow you. Now, showing you again, I mean, Twitter. I mean, this is, this is crazy that it connects with Twitter because on Twitter, you know, we average uh, three to 5,000 new connections a month. So knowing that, I mean, you can gain a lot of new followers. And yeah, as you can see, look at this, 243 friends. These people were like, these people are new to me. Probably, you know, I, I actually updated this yesterday. And in one day, I got 243 new friends who are also on AngelList. So Twitter is dominant. Follow all 243. And you basically keep, uh, keep finding people that you can grow your followings with using your social networks. And then Facebook, you know, Facebook for me, I don't find as many investors on Facebook because you, you can't really connect with a ton of people. Um, and in fact, it says I have no new connections there. Just to drive this point home one last time, find friends. After you've connected your, your social networks, you can always go back and try to find friends. And this is a really cool one too. Angelus has their own recommendation engine called People You May Know. So if you click refresh here, based on your already established connections on AngelList and your profile information, they might tell you people that you may know. And the reason why they're showing me employees at Deloitte is because in my profile, I put that I used to work at Deloitte. So AngelList is smart enough to know that anyone who works at Deloitte, Manolis might know them. Even though that company is 150,000 uh, employees, I don't know who these people are, but again, you want to you want to make sure that you follow these people, and so over time, since I've had this profile, just to give you an indication of, of what happens, um, you know, over time, I've I've been able to get thirteen hundred and seven people who have followed me back, and some of these people are most of these people are entrepreneurs, some of them are investors, and once you have a, a two way connections with these people you then are able to visit their profile and actually message them. Because they're following you, now you can actually go back and message them. If you're not following each other, you cannot message them at all. So unfortunately, you know, this is the thing. And I'm just going to just give this guy a message. I'm not sure if I ever talked to him. I'm just going to say, hi, Armando. Uh, you are actually on a live webinar I am hosting now. So I am making an example of how to interact on AngelList with you. If you would like to review the recording, feel free to take a look here. And so I'll just take uh, the link. I will post kind regards Manolis. And so then I'll click send and Armando would have received the message from me. 
we'll see if he ever comments back. I'll, I'll update you on that. But um, he's definitely a pretty heavy hitter. You could see he has a lot of different uh, investments. He's invested in over 25 startups. So these are real people um, who could potentially be investing in your startup. So here's, a, here's, here's another thing before we move on to the actual startup profile. So that is essentially the, the way you interact. Um, I just want to make sure that there's some other, uh, some other, uh, okay, I think we're actually done with this section. So I'm going to look around again very quick to see if there's any questions. No questions here. Um, and it does not appear that there is any questions here. So we'll just continue on. Now, if you wanted to create a startup, um, usually uh, you would have, you can either go, you can either click on the startups tab up here, and there should be a section that uh, that allows you to create your startup. But um, I can't find it right at the moment. But let's just say you're ready to create your startup, and of course our startup is the Virtual Incubator and Crowdfunding Network, which is owned by the parent company Reality Crowd TV and Media Corporation. Now this is, this is an important thing because the startup profile is really your crowdfunding campaign page if you think about it. So if, you're, if your company is gonna raise funding using AngelList, this is kind of your crowdfunding campaign page. Now AngelList is equity crowdfunding, so it doesn't follow the same rules as a donation and rewards based platform. That's very important to note because without knowing that, um, you're going to ultimately uh, get in trouble with the law. So you want to make sure that if you're going to do crowdfunding and you want to do donation and rewards, you're not going to use AngelList. You're going to go to Kickstarter and Indiegogo. But if your company doesn't is not conducive to the uh, to that model of, of funding that Rewards does, then this is one of your best bets is coming here. I always like when you first start, you have tips. You have tips on, into how you can make your profile better. Just like LinkedIn has tips for you, so does AngelList. And so these are some simple ones, and some are a little bit higher, you know, harder to get. But the bottom line is you want to get as close to 100% before you really start sharing your profile. Now, this is an interesting piece. When you first create your company, there's this edit bar up top, and, and if you ever want to change anything in the profile, all you got to do is look for the edit buttons, right? That's, that's important to know. But this first edit button is extremely important to know, and here's why. This is where you really, you know, you update, you update the logos, you put the company name, you talk about the high-level pitch, and you put some of your social links, et cetera. Now, here's another interesting piece of this that I just recently figured out. But company type, you want to you want to make sure that you select startup. If you wanted to to actually be an incubator, though, where you actually wanted to accept applications similar to the launch program, you would have to change your company type to incubator instead. So this is this is why company type is important. If you have a startup that needs to raise capital, make it a startup. But if you have an incub if you have a company that you want to make an incubator make sure that you change the company type to incubator in order to accept applications. And with that said, actually, before we go on to the startup profile, let me just show you what that means. So if I were to take a look at this startup connection uh, profile here, uh, this, this is really uh, Bert Shalensky's program that I'm helping him manage. Now, you know, you have his normal stuff, business consulting and pre-seed investing, but what's different in his particular instance is that he would have had a edit button up here. And when you edit it to the incubator and you create an application, you now have this tab called application. And so whenever someone applies to Bert's, um, whenever someone applies to Bert's uh, program here, uh, he is able to review the application. So, Let's just take a look and see how that looks. So when someone applies here, as you can see, we, this was created about three days ago, and there is about five different companies here that have applied. Um, I also applied just as a test case to see how it works. 
But basically, Bert gets your gets your applications, and then he could review the companies that are actually uh, that are actually applying. And some of these, I, I looked at them. Some of these are pretty cool. I'm not sure if they're from our community or not, but there's some like innovative startups that are already applying to Bert's program. Where else would you be able to find Bert's program, and where else could you apply for similar programs other than Bert's? Well, this is the really important thing under the More tab there's a place called incubators. And so when someone creates an incubator by changing their profile to that type, you then can see 77 other companies are willing to do similar types of programs, some of them for up to $250,000 in seed capital. So these are for more established companies most likely, and they're very, um, you know, they're very competitive. But you have 77 other opportunities that all you have to do is click the apply button and you see what the requirements are and then you can apply with your company. But you have to have a company set up. But I can apply with Reality Crowd TV or it tells you to create a new startup. So this, this application to incubators is your other way to get help for, for what you need. And one, one of them that I really wanna just share with everyone even though we're jumping ahead a little bit, one of the most important applications on this whole list, which I just saw for the first time, I'm not sure if AngelList has ever done this before, but if they, have, uh, if they haven't, then this is really the first time I've ever seen it. Uh, I'm trying to find where they are, for, for heaven's sake, where are you? Um, so AngelList itself had created an amazing opportunity for people to actually uh, apply to their program. I, I want to show you where it is because I'm, I know that I applied to it, and I really want to make sure that you guys see this. The deadline for this, I believe, is um, the deadline for this, I believe, is actually uh, the, the 31st of this month. So it's important that if any of you want to apply to it, there we go. Angel list, apply for funding. Apply to meet syndicate leads on AngelList. Now, their, their program here is insane. Basically, what they're saying is they're going to pick a, a company. They're going to pick multiple companies. And what, what they're going to do for you is they're just going to email blast all their investors on the platform uh, who are leading syndicates. And if you get chosen, you basically are going to meet the, the, the richest investors on AngelList so that they can talk to you and determine if they want to invest in you. And as you can see, they have a lo very long application process, um, and you got to fill out a lot. You want to put in a lot of what your business model is, all these things. I applied on July 19th, but the deadline, as, as you can see, the deadline is July 31st, which is in eight days. This is the first time I've ever seen them do anything like this. So if you feel that you have a startup that might qualify to be email blasted to all of the syndicate leads on AngelList, then my God, you need to get your act together and do this in eight days because this right here would be massively important um, for you to for you to make take advantage of. So uh, with that said, let's go back to the business startup. I want to do another quick gander to see if there's any questions. Okay, the crowd's pretty quiet today. Um, let me just take a look. No more questions in there either. Very good. So we'll go back to the um, we'll go back to the actual startup profile. Now the first thing you want to do of course is you want to put in a video telling people what, what your business is all about. You can also take screenshots which Right now, I, got, I have to update these screenshots because things have changed a little bit. Um, but and then you tell about your product. You know, same thing. Edit uh, everything. You could tell about your technology, and it limits it limits who can actually uh, see it because the people who can see technology that's usually something that's a little bit proprietary. So most people will uh, will be accredited in order to see that. You can add your founding team. You talk about the story of the startups. 
you put your traction as far as what the business is actually doing. So here's where you kind of just edit and you add new metrics. This is for metrics. And traction is one of the biggest important things that people need. Um, they they want to see the traction of a startup. Then you have a place where you could put your customers. I've, I haven't updated this in months. So, I mean, eventually I'd like to add all the Vicken customers in here. Uh, there's a place for partners that I haven't updated either, which would be another place to really uh, show a lot of a lot of traction. And then you could add um, you could add the the funding rounds, of course. And so you know we've invested about eighty thousand since we started. You you could name an incubator that you're a part of, and that's where this broadcast is being done right now. I'm actually um, doing this broadcast from Central Connecticut State's University Incubators. You got employees, you have advisors, you could add attorneys, board members, projects. And so there's just a lot of a lot of things you got to do to make your profile stand out. Now, why is it important, especially to update the traction numbers and to update customers and partner numbers and keep these up to date regularly? Why is this important? Because just like Kickstarter or Indiegogo, AngelList has its own staff picks or trending projects section. So if you're a startup and you're gaining traction, you have a lot of customers, on the startups tab, you can see trending startups. And so there's different ways that you can trend on AngelList. So these are the trending one by investments made. So these startups here, have received you know they're actively fundraising and they're trending because they're receiving capital contributions from investors as we speak and because they are trending like this uh that that allows them to be showcased to hopefully allow other investors to look at them and want to also invest in them so you can get trending by investments but you can also get trending by activity and this is kind of interesting so if it's by activity, let's just take a look and uh, zoom out for a moment. Okay, so this is interesting. Trending by activity shows this. You have recently published, but there was something else I thought that, uh, that uh, we can look at via the trending. Let me just take a look here. This is trending for raising capital. And so you can actually um, you can actually also uh, review all of AngelList. And if you look here, over 570,000 startups have, have at least created a platform. So things are um, things are very very interesting. Uh, so it's it's really cool to see all all the traction here. But let me go back to trending because I thought um, there was specific other trending that uh, we could see here. Um, hmm. Well, by activity, what that usually means is by how many customers that you're actually signing up, how many partners you're signing up, how much revenue and traction you're gaining. So by activity doesn't have anything to do with how much uh, money you're raising necessarily. It more so says how many people are, are becoming your customers and how many people are becoming your partners and how many of them are verified and, and legitimate. And so if, if, you can, if you can gain traction that way uh, by timing things right, that's how you're gonna wanna do it initially by activity so that then you can start getting investments. So again, AngelList is, not, is, is harder to raise money than Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So if you're having a hard time raising money on those two platforms, then you'll have a very hard time to raise money on AngelList. But the point here is it makes you track all of your activities so that you can actually raise capital eventually. And that's really the interesting piece here is you, you can use your startup profile as your own personal dashboard to, to just to, to check to see how good you're doing in comparison to other startups who are in similar positions. So that's, that's really the key is get to be trending. Now I want to take a moment as well to mention to mention something. 
I actually do have a few questions here, which is great. So let me actually get to these questions first before I mention what I was going to say. So Jay Moore. Um, Jay Moore is, is excellent. He also is a, is a venture investor. So Jay, thank you so much for watching. On AngelList, how do we find potential investors that we are not connected with through another social platform? Jay, excellent, excellent question. I'm glad you asked. Let's go and do that right now. That's where I was kind of heading with this. So if you wanted to connect with other, uh, was it investors? Yes. If you wanted to connect with other potential investors, Jay, this is how you would do it. There is a tab up here, if you can see it, called investors. And as you can see, 47,000 results of people who identify themselves as investors. And what's really cool is that not only does it show you investors, but it also allows you to, to check by syndicate lead. Now, this is also a good segue. A syndicate lead is someone who actually uh, is running a large fund on behalf of other investors who believe in that person's investing prowess. So they're, they're trusting that person to pick the deal flow so that they can be hands off and for them to invest in. So, so Timothy Ferris, you guys might know him. He, he is uh, one of the best, uh, you know, he's, he's one of the biggest investors on here. He's a celebrity of sorts. He, he wrote the four hour work week. And as you can see, he's an early investor in Twitter, Facebook, Alibaba. I mean, the, the guy, you know, is, is an investing guru basically. And he runs a syndicate. Now, to give you an example of how big his syndicate is, if we click on syndicates, this tab shows you where, um, where all of the uh, syndicates are. Tim Ferriss represents over $6 million because over 1,122 people are entrusting him with $6,000 to invest on their behalf. And it shows what he invests in, consumer internet, collaborative consumption, e-commerce. And you can kind of keep going down. I mean, his, his looks like it might be the largest, but um, there's this other big fish here that are just all about investing in, in the best startups. And this is one of the, this is where they go to do that. So we'll, we'll talk about syndicates a little bit later, but let's go back to investors here so I could drive this point home. So you have your syndicate leads, you have your investors, and you also have other categories, such as developers. If you're looking for a developer, or you know, you might also find co-founders on AngelList. Designer, same thing, front-end designer, you might be able to also find uh, individuals there. And then, of course, lawyers. So here's the thing. If you really wanted to find an investor, uh, Jay, and you wanted to pinpoint how you could find that investor, you want to go to the advanced search tab. And this is really cool because you can pick the role. So, it, you know, there's multiple roles here. You can have, a, there's a ton of them you can choose. But the one that you'd want to probably do is angel. So you're going to select angel investor. And then furthermore, you might want to select Boston because I believe that's where you're from, Jay. Angel investors in Boston who are interested in startups that are involved in the crowdfunding industry who went to Harvard. Probably not many, if any. Oh, there is one guy. But you, you, you get the point. You can actually, and then you can add a skill. So it, as you search up, you can drill it down. And we have one guy here. Uh, who's interested in crowdfunding, um, who says he's an investor, and he has four confirmed investments. And so you can actually look at his profile. You can look at his confirmed investments. And if you like this guy, again, it says contact or follow. You won't be able to contact because I'm not connected to him. I am connected to him uh, through other people, however. But what I would do is I would probably just click follow. And then if I really wanted to just, you know, drive the point home, um, I would say that I would probably have to go to Sergey. I'm connected with him through LinkedIn. So I'd probably have to go through Sergey. I'd go to LinkedIn and I'd actually ask him to make an introduction for me using the LinkedIn introduction feature. 
So that's how that's how you would go and actually identify new investors. And if you really want to make be like a, a, a really an investigator, you won't just stop at following. You'll try to click contact, see how you're connected with them, and then you'll find a way to connect with these guys because you're connected with them somehow. You're a friend, so I'm connected with him on AngelList too, and he could probably uh, try to make an introduction for me as well. So, you know, it, it's kind of like the law of like five connections or whatever it's called. Like it, it, they say, it takes only five connections to go across the United States. Um, so that's how I would do that. I would I would use this advanced search feature to look very specifically for people who are interested in locations markets maybe you know if you want to know anyone i mean let's let's just take away the market and just see people who are alumni of harvard university angel investors who are alumni of harvard um 357 of them uh and it's pretty cool because you could you could look at uh how many investments they made in uh ascending order and as you can see you got uh, mr caruso here's a big fish 101 investments Tom Fallows is a big guy, uh, you know. So all these, it's just interesting to see that uh, indeed <laughs> going to Harvard is probably indicative of future success. Um, and then if they have skills, you can do that. But really, you know, the main thing is you want to make sure that you filter on market. You know, like if you're a SaaS product, you would type in SaaS and you would try to find an investor for your SaaS product. You know, again, you got people like David McClure, who's like the founding partner partner of 500 startups. He's done 602 investments. So you, you see there's just some big, big fish on here. Now, at the same time, um, you know, since, since we're talking about actually searching on here, this is also something that I'd like to say in, in the startup area. If you're trying to find, if you're not trying to crowdfund, but you're a service provider, and you just want to like identify some new startups that that you're passionate about who might need your help then then you should do the the same thing you you should you should like search these companies you should look, browse them down uh based on different criteria and you know you, you would ultimately be able to find startups that you want to work with you would review those profiles you would identify the founders in the profiles and then just like uh, just like the actual investors tab, we can actually do an advanced search and we could find the role for the entrepreneurs and the startups. So an entrepreneur. And again, by location, market, et cetera. And this is how you can connect with entrepreneurs who you might be able to either form a strategic partnership with or offer your services to. So this is not only for crowdfunding, but you could actually gain business by connecting with people using it almost like a LinkedIn type platform. So I think that answers the question. Let me just go check it out here. Um, let's see. Uh, is there a live link for new members? Um, I am not sure, Mark, what you mean a live link for new members unless you're talking about the uh, the incubator. So let me actually um, let me actually type in here. I just typed in the link to the incubator there, Mark, for you, uh, in case you were looking to see um, to to sign up for the virtual incubator. But it's uh, incubator.realitycrowdtv.com slash sign up. Uh, Diane just said, how do we how do we actually approach angel invest angel investors? So Diane, I hope that little segment on searching for investors uh, got you the ability to identify investors to engage with. So your first step is connecting with them. The second step is after you've connected, there's a few different things you can do. So because I actually sent the message uh, earlier on in, in the webinar to uh, Mr. Armando Biondi, uh, let's just use him as an example. So as you can see here, um, I sent them a message down here. You know, hi, Armando. Hope you're doing well and getting ready for the weekend. You're actually live on a webinar I'm hosting now. So, yeah. So now, it, So let's say I first connected with Armando and I never talked to him before in my life. 
the first thing I would do is to engage this angel investor. I believe he's invested in, you know, a lot of different startups, 33 confirmed investments. The way that I would want to engage with Armando is first I'd want to learn more about him. And the first way you can learn more about him is obviously connecting with him on other networks. So you can click on the LinkedIn symbol and you can uh, connect with him on LinkedIn. Let's actually do that because I'm not connected. And I'm just going to say we've done business together with Reality Crowd TV, even though we didn't. Hi, Armando. Um, further to the angel list message, I wanted to also show my webinar audience how to engage with an angel investor like yourself. Would love to connect, and you can watch the webinar replay here. And, and this is kind of how you have to approach it too, guys. Like, you know, I, I don't know Armando, but, I mean, I'm, I, I could tell that he's a good guy. I could tell that he has uh, experience. And so just because I don't know someone, a lot of people are just timid to, to reach out and be proactive. And sometimes you just have to you just have to go out there and go for it. As long as as long as you're respectable, as long as you present yourself well, there should not be any hesitation in reaching out and trying to do business with people. So you send out a personal message and oops. Cannot include website addresses. Okay. Um, uh, so I'll just say we'd love to connect with you. And uh, keep in touch. Uh, so there we go. Send invitation. And I just sent an invite to Mr. Armando Biondi. Again, you can look at his Twitter account. Another way that I would engage, and actually let me sign out of my uh, client's account here and sign into mine, um, is you also are going to want to start engaging with him on Twitter. So you're not only you're not only you know you utilizing your ability to um, to connect on AngelList and LinkedIn, but you want to connect with Mr. Armando Biondi or whatever investor you're dealing with on Twitter. So you know here here's what here's what we'll do. Um, so Armando is sharing a lot of stuff here. I want to I want to look down and actually find something that he uh, he shared. Now here's here's interesting. Ad, Ad Espresso, if I'm not mistaken, is his company, co-founder at Ad Espresso. So if you really want to make friends with an investor who also owns a company, you want to share his, uh, you want to share his his content. So I'm just going to click on his uh, Ad Espresso retweet, and I'm going to just uh, also say, um, actually, I should probably look and see what it is first. This is by far the most important update, and I'm excited to finally share with you. Wow, this is actually a big deal. Um, okay, so Ad Espresso created the Facebook Ads Gallery, an introduction of rule-based ad optimization. This is actually pretty awesome for Facebook. I mean, if anyone here is uh, interested, I mean, go to adespresso.com because it looks like some cool stuff here. So I'm going to say, sure. Yeah, here. So again, he's gonna again get hit with me because I'm joining his newsletter now too. You just try to try to get as much as you can uh, connection-wise with people, so they get hit by multiple angles. Um, all right. So this is what I'm gonna say. Though. I'm gonna say um, <sighs> wow. Love the new Facebook ads gallery and. rule-based optimization that you just implemented. Rules-based optimization that you just implemented. Congrats on the, I just say congrats.
So now, you know, not only did I connect on LinkedIn, not only did I connect on AngelList, now I'm saying something on Twitter by sharing what, he, what his post was, and now I'm complimenting him on his amazing new accomplishment in Ad Espresso. So this guy, whether he likes it or not, he's going to get hit on, on so many different platforms. And last one, of course, is Facebook. You can click on Facebook, and if you really want to, you know, go all in, you can actually add him as a friend. Most people will probably not accept, but I'm just showing you just for the heck of it that you can actually uh, become friends with this investor on Facebook. Now, um, so as we as we look uh, as we look down, we see what his profile is. He has he has all these investments. He has a, his about section. He's got some good superpowers. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's wow. He's he's got some good experiences. Um, so what I would do here is now that I know a little bit about him, it's time to actually send him a message. Um, you're, you can't connect with Armando directly. The heck? I wonder if Armando blocked me. I thought we were friends. <laughs> Armando may not <laughs> may not like me in particular anymore. I thought we were friends. So maybe I made a Maybe I made a massive error here, everybody. But um, but uh, I thought Armando and I were connected. Let's just double check here to see if that was Angelus error or if he defriended me. Um, Oh my lord, I think Armando defriended me. <laughs> well, that's kind of embarrassing. Okay. So, you know, for whatever reason Armando was not very happy with uh with what happened here, I suppose. Um but for some reason I I'm not friends with Armando anymore. I'm not sure if I if I did something there, but yeah, Armando and I are no longer connected. So, who who asked that question? Um, it was Diane. So, so Diane, what I will say is this, Diane, um, you normally want to be able to connect with people and you want to make sure you hit them in different locations. But for whatever reason, Armando, I guess, did not like what, uh, what I said. I don't really know what, um, what caused him not to like it. That's why I want to ask him the feedback. But, uh, but basically I think that is, but you want to make sure that you you connect and you have a strategy as to how to connect with him, and uh, and determine you know the best way to actually uh, be a part of his network. Um, that's really amazing. I cannot send a message to Armando right now. Okay, yeah, he must he must unfollowed me. Um, so. Uh, let's X out of this real quick and we'll go to the, we'll go to the next question. Um, next question is from, uh, Charmaine Ridley. How do I help others get crowdfunding? Can I charge a fee? Um, so Charmaine, I, you, you can charge a fee to help people in crowdfunding. I mean, you'd probably want to offer, um, co consulting services or marketing services, but, um, but you probably need to learn how to do it first. So if I were you, Charmaine, the the best way to to kind of engage and become a thought leader in crowdfunding is to actually, um, you know, be, begin to help people, I guess, like pro bono at first or as a percentage of the funds raised because a lot of people who ask for help uh, as a percentage of the funds raised. Then once you get a few things under your belt, you might begin to be able to charge a monthly retainer like a lot of companies do. Um, if I were you, I would join the incubator and ask a lot of questions and ask questions like that in the incubator platform, as well as answer other people's questions on the incubator platform to show your knowledge and experience. That's another way to really uh, gain a um, gain a following. Um, is it possible to be both in need of funding and wanting to help others find funding? Absolutely. Um, my my organization, Vicken, is in need of funding, and I'm helping others. Uh, get funding, so it's absolutely possible. 
Jay says, so you can send a message to someone you are not connected to an angelist, but you could request to be connected to him or her an angelist through LinkedIn. Uh, so Jay, yes, you can you can send a message. You you can you can send a connection request on AngelList, but until they accept that connection request, you cannot message them. Now, on LinkedIn, if you're connected to someone who's connected to your connection, on LinkedIn, you would want to actually um, invest. Uh, sorry, uh, on LinkedIn, you would actually want to use the LinkedIn platform to message someone who's connected to your connection that you're a first connected connection to, and you want to ask for them to make an introduction on LinkedIn so that then you meet them on LinkedIn and then eventually you connect on AngelList. I hope that uh, I hope that answers the question. Um, let's see here really quickly. I just want to see if there was. Uh, I'm going to actually ask Armando a question. Uh, I got to ask. I'm going to have to ask him this because he just retweeted. I'm going to make this private actually because this is this is really bothering me. Did you just unfollow me on Angel List? Just curious because I can't send you another message. So we'll see. Hopefully Armando did not unfollow me because I like the guy. I think he's a nice guy. So, but as you can see already, that little uh, that little exchange, I, I, you know, has already gotten a response. So, um, let's see. So that's that's that. So if we go back to Angel List. I just went over the ability to connect with people to find your target market and to also eventually um, send out private messages. And this is the thing, your private messaging campaigns, you're gonna wanna send, you're gonna wanna send these out regularly. So I don't personally send them out yet because I haven't had a need to right at the moment. I haven't used AngelList uh, for that purpose in a while. But technically, the way you're going to want to do this is you're going to want to develop some sort of template uh, to begin to send out to your connections on AngelList. And as you can see, there is a, a ton of – so see, there we go. He's here. That's really weird. Why can I not um, – why can I not message him? That is really weird, guys. The AngelList is, uh, is messing up. Anyway, um, anyway, so what what you would want to do is create a template and either do this yourself or hire a company to to help you um, go through your connections. But using that template, the person is going to end up wanting to look through and uh, and find the and find people that might be investors and then private message them. Uh, the whole time. Go through a campaign to private message, um, you know, such as Mark. It looks like that's a, a, the ability to message. You can go through and message people. And, and, the, and the actual um, private message can be something as simple as this. Uh, let me go back here for a moment. Um, hi, Mark. Um, hope you are doing well. Uh, and things are good at Goldman Sachs. Um, since we are connected on AngelList, I figured I would do what this platform was made for and introduce myself. I am the founder of a startup called Vicken, the virtual incubator and in crowdfunding network whose purpose is to assist people in their crowdfunding journey. Um, my current need is to connect with potential investors 
for the startups going through the incubator. And I was hoping we could connect to determine one, if you are an active investor and are accredited. And two, what is your investment criteria? I would love to hop on a call uh, to get to know you better. And uh, please let me know your preferred email address and or phone number so we can coordinate a time to chat. Thanks for your time today. You know it is valuable. And and regards Manolis. And then you know what what I what I tried to say is uh, P.S. If you wanted to learn more about about Vicken, you can review my Angel List profile at angel.co/slash Vicken. So this is this is how I would engage with people throughout your list now. You know, in, in my situation, I'm going to start to actually do a very similar message here. So as you guys just notice, I'm doing work while giving you guys a webinar. I needed to create a, a template email to send to people um, anyways for this very specific purpose. So this, for me, what I would do with this template email, if I was going to use it over and over again, I would copy it. And I would actually uh, save it in a Word document so that I don't have to continually uh, come up with a template over and over and over again. For the next person, you know, I would just end up changing up the, the name, uh, changing up the company. And so the way I kind of just remind myself is I would highlight the name and the company. And... Um, and, I would, and that's it. I would just go through my list and, and just send out these messages one by one by one until I've gone through uh, every person on my list. And by that time, there would probably be a ton of messages and follow-up that would be needed. Um, but something like this, a very simple, honest, to the point uh, message, uh, respecting their time, being kind. And, uh, and, you know, obviously you want them to visit your profile, but make it an afterthought so that, you know they they understand that it's not a it's not a sale you're trying to make it's more so a connection that would hopefully be mutually beneficial. So if we click send here, we just sent him the message, and so you know he probably would go here and say, "Oh, what's a Vicken?" And by clicking here, he would find out that Vicken is exactly this, the world's virtual incubator and crowdfunding network. So you would go ahead and do that uh, over and over and over again until you've, uh, you've either raised the money you need or gotten some more business or whatever the case may be. But again, the social network will make the connection. It is you who has to actually make the conversation. If you're not willing to talk on the phone or, or and you're just expecting to gain money without uh, engaging on this platform, then you're sorely mistaken. You're not going to raise anything. You need to you need to make sure that you use the platform to connect, but then it's up to you to talk to the people, uh, etc. So let me just double check to see if there's any more questions here. Um, okay, no questions here. All right. Let's uh, let's see if there's any questions on the Hangout. No questions there. And um, all right. So I want to show people something else too. Um, there's a couple other tabs that we didn't talk about. There's the Jobs tab, where you can actually find a job or post a job. And so, wouldn't how many of you would you know how many of you are entrepreneurial but don't feel comfortable making a startup right now? 
If that's you, then if you click find a job, then you can easily, you know, upload your resume from your computer or you could import it from Facebook. Let's just actually, let me actually try to do this. I've never created a profile, but let me just show you how easy it is. Um, I don't remember where I put my uh, resume, actually. That would help me to know that. Uh, do I have a resume folder? There we go. All right, so my last update, I think, was here. So you can upload your resume from a Word document, uh, and AngelList is working to do that right now. Uh, hopefully, it will work for us. In the meantime, let's see if Armando uh, replied. He said no. Good. Cool. Thanks uh, for letting me know. I sent a message as part of a webinar I am teaching, and now I can't seem to message you. See, Armando's a really nice guy, everybody. Uh, I would definitely take a look at Ad Espresso uh, if you're going to do any marketing. Uh, this is the best way to create ads and tools. Really great guy. Let's let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> um, okay, so now AngelList went ahead and it says confirm your resume information. Current location in Britain. Educate. Nope, this is not my education. I went to University of Connecticut, not University of Bristol. Work experience. Uh, what the heck? I mean, that's true, but is that the only thing that's uploading? This is weird. Um, just see what we have here. All right, so you can go through and, and do this. Um, I, unfortunately, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not really working out so well. Um, actually, maybe it did. It worked out a little bit. Uh, all right. Great. So you can go go through here and uh, and make updates as needed. So if we if we could just say just browsing, choose a role. Um, say marketing. Open other job types. So you can even say co-founder. You're open to being a co-founder or a contractor. Current cities willing to relocate. Open to working remotely. Annual salary, I'll just say 100 grand, but you don't have to say that. Uh, are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, I am. And this just takes in the other information. And then... Uh, these are some weird skills that they added, so I'm not going to say that. PR, sure, why not? Click save, and now you can uh, now you can now it automatically shows you startups that are looking for uh, for jobs. So if if I wasn't committed to Reality Crowd TV and Vicken, I could apply to Beacon, VP of Marketing, Social Media Strategist. By the way, way better is running an equity crowdfunding campaign, a Regulation A. These guys are running an unaccredited investor campaign right now, one of the first to ever do it. That's actually pretty cool. Um, director of Growth, uh, relationship start here. Uh, you know, so you can you can just see all these different uh, opportunities that you could easily just join a startup for. And so it's pretty cool, you know, if, if, you're in, if you're in the realm of wanting to join a startup, you could easily do that here. Um, and then, of course, you could post a job. Uh, recruiting, let's see what they say here. Uh, so this is, uh, oh, this is interesting. So this is a startup uh, being able to post a job. Um, you could post a job, get started now. And I think uh, I think I've already done that actually. 
uh, for a, a co-founder slash developer. But, um, but you guys get the picture. Uh, let's see if there was anything else that needed to be said here. Okay, actually, I think we're I think we're pretty good on the profile. Now, one uh, one other thing I want to show you is the fund. So this is AngelList. Um, AngelList itself runs its own syndicate fund. So they they run their own funding, um, and basically for accredited investors, you can invest in one of their funds, and that one fund will invest in a hundred startups. So if you have money, it's a pretty cool way to actually pick and choose like a, a basket of uh, of funds to, to invest in. Um, and then again, we, we talked about syndicates. Uh, the last thing I'll, the last thing we'll take a look at is, uh, is actual, um, investing online. So if you wanted to invest as a startup for your own business, like if you wanted to actually, uh, start an actual, um, crowdfunding campaign. This is what we didn't talk about. You have your fundraising tab over here. And so this is where you can edit and create a fundraising round. Now this doesn't mean you're actually um, going capable of funds right away. You have to wait and, and do actually some legal work. You want to create like an offering document and all that. Uh, and I'll show you, I'll show you that in a moment actually. Um, but let's say you wanted to open a round um, you, you can go ahead and do that. Now, I, I did a test. I did a test case. So I want to show you how it looks like if you're actually going to do a syndicate. If somebody wants to um, to syndicate a company, you actually have to get the get the startup to fill out a ton of information. So I just sent myself a request for information for my syndicate to invest in Vicken and Reality Crowd TV. Now, just so you know, you are not allowed to syndicate as a syndicate, your own company that you're the co-founder of. So that is just, you can't do that, just so you know. Um, but, uh, but I just did it because I was curious to see how the process would work and what I would need. So if, if a syndicate wants to invest in your startup, you're going to get a notice that says, Manolis, can you fill this out? It is required for my syndicate fund to invest. So if I click here, it, it requires me as the founder of Reality Crowd TV to do certain things. So you can, uh, you can actually choose, you know, allow anyone to actually see it. You could allow only syndicates to see it, or you could go into stealth mode. Um, I'll do that. You fill out your information, where you're incorporated. And just so you know, you have to either be a C Corp, S Corp, or LLC. Um, and so the bottom line is, whether you're a C Corp or an LLC, you will have to convert, uh, sorry, an S Corp or an LLC, you will have to convert into a C Corporation in order to actually gain investment. And you have to agree to all these legal disclaimers. I'm just going to click it just so you guys can see. And now this is uh, this is information on on what you want to do. So, what type of what type of funding do do does Reality Crowd TV want to raise? Now, again, I'm just showing you for how how this works. You can choose equity, convertible debt, or safe. Um, safe is a newer type of uh, agreement. I um. I actually don't have a lot of knowledge on SAFE, but I've actually learned about it recently. But most people are saying that they'd rather do a SAFE. It's, it's almost like an option for future equity, whereas this is a convertible debt or straight equity. SAFE is like an option for future equity from what I understand. So, you know, I could choose whatever. I'm raising a billion dollars because I'm delusional. Let's see. I'm valuing myself at a trillion dollars or whatever that many zeros is. Uh, how many how many months of runway will your company have after your entire raise? So 
I plan to burn through a billion dollars after one month <laughs> because I'm just going to be buying islands with uh, Richard Branson. Other deal terms um, must be served with a gold chalice for dinner. I'm just a baller at this point. Um, and now here's the really uh, the real nuts and bolts of this purchase agreement. <clears throat> you actually have to upload a legal document that's a purchase agreement. Uh, you need to upload a term sheet, which is lays out what what the terms are going to be for the investors, and you also have to show what the cap table is. And cap table stands for capitalization, and that means if you do have more than one person who owns shares in the company, you just have to disclose what the what the actual cap table looks like for your company. So if there's two people and you're like 50-50, then you say, here's my cap table, there's this many shares outstanding, of which this person owns this much and that person owns that much. You also want to add current investors. If you have a lead investor who is someone who will vouch for your company, you put the name of the current investor and you put the name of or the amount of how much you're trying to raise. You could type in the previous seed rounds and everything else. And then you can click continue, but it won't let me continue because I don't have everything uploaded. Can't be blank. So the last thing is, the last thing I'm going to ask you for is the traction. And traction, of course, is just the metrics that your that your startup is doing. So, you know, you, you can't just raise money and, and, and like right off the bat, you actually have to provide all of this information and you have to be realistic. Obviously, I was being funny here. I'm really not trying to raise that much. Um, so that's how you raise the capital online. Let's take a look again uh, if there's any other additional questions. Uh, Jay says, are there any sites that compete with AngelList that have gained traction that you would recommend? So Jay, very good, uh, very good question again. Um, Yes, there are. So let me show you uh, place, this place called Gust. So Gust.com is another one of these uh, another one of these um, platforms as well. That's very similar to AngelList. I have not used it a lot actually, so I don't know how good it is. But technically, you know, it, you you probably should create profiles on all these, especially if they're free. But Gust.com has a similar structure, you know, startup, you got investors. And so again, here, just to give you an indication, um, their Alexa traffic ranking is 23,000 in the world. So they also have a lot of traction, but obviously AngelList is uh, far and above much, uh, much more active. You have another one called uh, crowdfunder.com. And they're they're more so a platform, but it still has the same uh, the same kind of dynamics as an angel list. Uh, these guys are are pretty good too. I mean, again, seventy six thousand in the world, so not as uh, not as much as others, but still nothing to sneeze at. Uh, what other ones? Um, Equity Net. Now, EquityNet's a little bit different because they actually offer services uh, that are part of the actual signing on process. So if you're an entrepreneur, you actually are going to be paying a monthly membership for this. But the the cool part about EquityNet is that it allows you to – they have certain technology like a business plan technology that allows you to actually um, – create a, a business plan like in a step-by-step -step process so yet they have analytics they have a bench business benchmarking efficient funding so they you know for the for the membership fee whatever this is they actually allow uh, a company to create their plan directly on their platform so their 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 business plans plus crowdfunding so I hope that answers your question there. There's a lot of these, Jay, and they're and they're going to keep popping up, in my opinion. There's it's just a it's a very large uh, pool of potential potential places to go. Um, and again, I just also want to just I'll, I'll make one last point here as well for the incubators. You you all should really 
apply to these. You should you should apply to these incubators um, and make sure that that uh, you actually go ahead and do this. You know, and actually I think this is one that I didn't apply for yet. This is the you could actually apply for 500 startups if you wanted to. So let's let me just uh, go through an application really quick if it doesn't take too long. So you can see that once you have your company set up, you can actually apply to an accelerator program. And so 500 startups is one of the most well-known, if not the most well-known, uh, accelerator pro program in the world. And, uh, and this is how easy it is to apply. Okay, so their accelerator program is a fast-paced program with 30 startups hosted in San Francisco for four months. We are currently taking application for a program that starts in mid-July. We invest 125K in exchange for 5% in charge of 25K program fee for a net 100 to the company. From week to week, you'll be exposed to a number of awesome talks, office hours, events, and hands-on mentorship. So uh, they show you tips for getting in and they show you want to learn more. So in addition to the profile you have for your startup, they ask you, have you, you know, have you launched your product? Yes. When did you launch your product? Um, January 2015. Uh, early stage startup entrepreneurs. who are seeking to learn how to crowdfund. Uh, how much revenue per month? Um, I'm just going to say uh, I'm not actually going to apply here. I'm just filling this out because uh, that's not, this isn't accurate. Um, and and I I'm also would write more than just this. I'm just trying to go through it. Uh, how much are you your book in 2014? And um, actually, sorry, not head of everything. I still have teammates, uh, founder and CEO. So, um, oh yeah. Um, you know what? What I would have to say to them is, uh, you know, you, you got to make sure that you you get all your all your stuff booked here, and um, and that's how it would work. Uh, so January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and uh, you know what? Whatever. I'll actually book this, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend doing what I'm doing. I'm just being very short here. Just so that we can uh, we could figure it out, and then I could always I could always change my application after. Um, so if I click apply, there we go. It says your your application to 500 startups batch 15 has been submitted. Now after you after you actually submit, you can look at your applied, and you can go back, read through it, and you could actually change your application. You can click edit. And change, or you could withdraw it. Uh, so I would, um, you know, what I'll actually do is I'll actually withdraw because I don't want to. I want to take my time and apply to them. But that's as simple as it was. Uh, being able to apply to a mega, um, a mega actual actual uh, company like this. So. You know, I would recommend that you definitely go ahead and do that because this will be one of the most important pieces uh, for very early stage startups to 
uh, to actually um, succeed. And, and last but not least, of course, a reminder that we have teamed up with Startup Connection for their pre-seed program. So if you are going to apply, definitely apply to this one because this is the one associated with Vicken. We have about six applications so far. We're, we're looking for a lot more. And uh, I think that's it. I, I think we've gone over a heck of a lot of content here. Um, so for those of you who have stuck with us this whole time, thank you so much. I hope that was uh, educational on AngelList. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot of work involved to connect. But if there's one thing that I should leave you with for this webinar, it's this. On AngelList, you need traction. You're not going to raise capital out of the sky. You need business traction. You need to actually do and start a business, not just have an idea anymore. The ones who raise money on a simple idea are usually the ones who've had past experiences that are indicative that they can actually pull off what they're trying to do. So in your cases of, of people who are starting uh, from scratch, their first business ever or their first startup ever, the only way you'll raise the capital is if you have the traction. So spend time working on your business and fundraise at the right time. Only when you've had some proof of concept, some traction and some numbers to show people uh, that they can say, okay, I'm convinced that this person has longevity, he's committed, she's committed, etc. So everyone, thanks again for watching this webinar. This has been another presentation of Reality Crowd TV. Uh, and the virtual incubator and crowdfunding network. And until next time, dream it, believe it, achieve it. Thank you.